Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden. Today's video is part two of adding some beautiful plants back to the slope. So if you saw yesterday's video, this is where I added already two new varieties of shrubs and they're looking really beautiful, especially the cotinus with this crimson red foliage glowing in the sun, amazing. As you can see, I'm standing in the midsection of the garden because I just want to show you in the back here. There's still a lot of color going on, really, really beautiful. And you can see some leaves on the ground, so I really got to start collecting the last bit of them leaves but if i swing around i just want to show you the walnut trees and especially the one at the front look at it almost empty yes isn't that a beautiful sight for me it is now because i've been so busy with collecting all of those leaves in the past days it was madness going on like wheelbarrows full full of leaves everything onto my leaf compost but it's looking so good almost full and i can't wait for it to work its way down so i have fresh leaf compost very soon to start working with you can see it's beautiful weather today which is great because i really can do stuff in the garden today what I want to do with you is basically first walk you through those plants that I want to add on the slope today, just explain a little bit, and then go to the back there and just try and find the perfect location for them and then just start digging in them. So hope you are excited about today's video. I prepared everything for you out here on our outdoor dinner table underneath the walnut tree and even though the tree dropped most of its leaves it still provides a good amount of shade because first I thought I'll show you everything back at the slope on the bench but there's so much sun there that it just was not possible it would have been sun flare all over so I think this is just a perfect area to walk you through a little bit. So as you can see I came across two absolute beautiful grasses then I have two perennials that I want to add to the slope and a flat of autumn beautiful annuals. So let me first talk a little bit about the grasses. The first one I'm going to add is another miscanthus. So if you saw my previous videos where I started with a new border in the back of a garden, I already added two varieties of miscanthus there and this is another one that I want to add. This is called Ferner Osten, which translates into like Far Eastern English. So if I remember, I'm gonna add the name to the description of this video so you can Google it and do your own research on it. You can tell it has an absolute beautiful autumn coloring, all like crimson and amber colors, really beautiful and special. And the grasses that are already added to the back of a garden do the same job. They all come in these beautiful red tones. I added the shrubs in my previous video that have like this beautiful autumn foliage colors. I'm gonna add some more bestorita with red flowers. So I really wanna focus on the back of a slope having these red purple color tones going on. So I feel this will be the perfect addition for it. When it comes out in spring and throughout summer, the grass will be green. They're a really lovely, deep green, lush color, topped by dark red, beautiful flower hats, very airy. This is so special about the miscanthus that it stands upright by the flower hats, kind of spill over, they wave in the wind. They have this really beautiful magic quality to them. Now in autumn, when the temperatures are dropping, what happens is that the green foliage and stems change the color into crimson red at the axis of each one. They're almost like ambery and then red towards the tips and the flower heads. They kind of change color into this fluffy white, really beautiful airy texture. I think just an amazing addition to the slope. Uh, when you plant miscanthus, always make sure that you give it the perfect location and it needs to be a sunny location in your garden. Miscanthus does not thrive very well in partly shade. I've tried it. And what happens is it might come out with a good growth. It does not flower most of the time and it tends to flop over. So really make sure when you want to add a miscanthus that you find a perfect sunny location, well drainage, and then it will be very happy. One last word about this variety, it grows up to 1 meter 40, 1 meter 60 in height. I mean, it's still in its pot, so obviously it hasn't done it in the pot this year, but next year it will. So I feel this is just like the perfect height because it's not so overpowering. Some miscanthus can grow up to 2 meter, 2 meter 50 even. So I feel this is one that you can easily add to any kind of border planting. Then the other grass that I came across, something that really excites me, it's one of my favorite grasses almost, um, next to miscanthus of course, it, this is Hakunikloa and look at it, I really just bought it because of this autumn color. It has all these lovely tones of like amber, rust, copper, red, crimson, everything in just one grass basically, absolutely beautiful. There's no label information really on it, so I can't tell you what variety I bought, but I can tell you a little bit about Hakunikloa because I've grown it before. 
So um, Hakani Clover, in theory, likes to grow in a partly shaded area. So it would be perfect, for example, if you have a border with some shrubs or trees and you need something like a front planting, because when they grow to their full size, they almost build these beautiful dome shapes. Really lovely, soft texture. They kind of spill over, they wave in the wind beautiful lush green color throughout summer. They also come in like yellow chartreuse tones. And then in autumn, most of the varieties change color. Some really golden, I've seen the golden varieties, and this one to this absolute beautiful reddish tone. I try to grow it in the garden in location as it should be grown basically per prescription, or description. <laughs> and it was not doing its thing unfortunately really. It kind of had a really hard time coming back after winter and even though it's in its position for I think four or five years now, the plants just don't want to grow to a good size. I've done a research and I think because of the climate that I'm gardening at here at the Baltic Sea, the grass might enjoy actually a sunny position and this is what I'm going to try at the back of a slope. So really complete new approach. The soil is still kind of rich and moist there which is important for a Hakani clover or the Japanese mountain grass. But um, I try and give it a more sunny location where the sun, uh, sun will just warm up the soil early in spring so hopefully it will be a happy camper there and i want to put it somewhere at one of these terraces at the corner because then it can just spill over beautifully and wave in the wind so i think this is going to be so beautiful then i've got perennials and those were actually a gift from a friend of mine from dusseldorf so thank you claudia for those she had them on her balcony and then she said well they stopped flowering so do you want to have them it's like i'll take them i always take a lovely free plant and these are autumn anemones which i really love so i've done a complete video of planting autumn anemones just in case if you're interested you can just like scroll down and find the video where i'd only focused on them but in general, they like partly shaded areas. So at the corner of a slope, that is a perfect area where I can add them. And you can see, even though that the flower heads are actually like cut off now, so there won't be any seed heads or anything on them this year, they still have this beautiful dome shape, kind of airy growing habit. And I can see already that here, they start forming some runners at the side of the pot, which is great because I know that they will build a good clump basically. The back of a slope for me, it is an extension of the garden, but at the same time, I kind of use it as a productive space. Like I grow cut flowers there and I've grown vegetables there and I want to continue that mentality. So by adding these to the slope, I will actually add more beauty that I could potentially use for cut flower arrangement next year. And I think Ottoman enemies are really beautiful in cut flower arrangements because they have this delicate texture on these long stems, just beautiful. And on top of it, because it's from a friend and she bought in the garden center, there is a label information in it. It's called Pink Saucer, and Pink Saucer, of course, they come with pink flowers. So autumn enemies come in all different kind of tones of pink and white. And I kind of like the pink ones though, because they're always like soft, easy, they're bright, and I can always mix them in quite well with all the other colors that I grow in the garden when, uh, I, when it comes down to cut flower arrangements. Then the last thing that I have is a flat of autumn annuals, really pretty ones. And actually I bought them um, for the cemetery because I wanted to take my parents drive to Northern Germany and just prepare the, the grave for my grandparents a little bit. But it was terrible weather, unfortunately. It was pouring down and we decided we're not gonna go there because we would just be digging puddles basically. And it was really windy on top of it. So I've taken the things with me now to Poland and in a way I thought actually it's a nice thing now because I bought them for my grandparents and if I would have put them on their grave I would see it maybe for half an hour leave and kind of forget about it but now I have the plants with me and whenever I see them in the garden I think of my grandparents which is a beautiful thing to do. So I kind of thought for next year maybe I'll just buy two flats and then one flat goes onto the grave and the second flat I'll take with me because then I always have this momentum of thinking of my grandparents when I am in the garden. So what I have are actually colors I know my grandma would have loved because those were also her favorite colors in the garden. I found these absolute stunning mums, quite small though, but the flower hats are big and really beautiful in color, blush tone, almost like this lavender quality at the back of the flowers to it, really pretty. And then I got three violas. Um, and it's really beautiful, dark, rich purple tone. One of my favorite garden colors. I really love purple tones and I think they're really cute. Just got three of them though and I need to go into the ground actually today because I start looking a little leggy and sad so it's perfect time to put them into the ground. 
So what I want to do now is just take everything to the back of a slope, find the perfect location for it, and then just start planting with you guys. <music> already planted almost everything but one grass. This is what I want to plant with you guys together. So just in case if you haven't seen me planting, I just want to talk you through what is important when you buy a perennial or a grass. Because when you go to your garden center, what you see is a top growth and this is kind of like what draws your eye and attention to. But what is happening in here in this plastic bucket is really important and I always check what is going on in here. So what I do is I just quickly tip it over, pop it out and when this is coming out like this it's a good sign actually because if it comes, if you try and uh, let it come out of its pot and it crumbles apart then it hasn't rooted in well. This has rooted in really well. It holds itself, looks good. The roots are all looking very strong and robust. Nothing is mushy or rotten or anything. This is very important and it's not heavily pot bound. It's a little pot bound so you could just come in with your finger and just gently tease them apart a little bit. The worst thing is when they really pop out here at the base or at the bottom then you kind of like need to really try and just rip it apart actually. But here this looks all good and one thing I can show you, so if I just come closer to the camera and this is really good on grasses, you see all of the new fresh shoots actually. All the way around there are fresh shoots forming which is really good especially for the Hakame clover grass. So this showed me that this is going to be a strong and robust plant even though it didn't really cost a lot like one of these tiny plugs cost 12 swatter which is kind of like not even three euros so I feel if they don't survive I spend in total nine euros here now and it's not a big investment but if they do survive and do a good thing I know that this is a good location for them and I can continue with them because I just love these grasses. Now to the planting I mean this is fairly easy um, I've mulched this area in already fairly well, so after I planted it, I don't need to add any extra mulch. If you plant grasses around this time of the year, I would always suggest give it a good cover, like some sort of mulch. Put like leaves on top of it, put like wood chips like I do next to it, because that kind of like protects it from really heavy, harsh frosts that are coming. Because at this time of the year, whatever you plant, nothing is going to root in. It's just going to sit there as you put it in, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, next spring comes, it'll all grow back with fresh, strong growth, basically. So I'll just quickly come in with my shovel get some soil out. Kind of like already a good round shape, how the pot will go in there. That looks good. And then before I put it in, I just quickly check basically, is the hole deep enough, wide enough it is, because you will always plant these things dead level. It should not sit higher or lower. You don't want to put a grass in a puddle or something and also you don't want to put it like higher because then the frost can sometimes come in and you could see all these fresh shoots here. They are quite on the surface actually so they would just die basically when the hot uh, hard frost hits them. So what I do with whatever perennial grass I plant I just put a tiny bit of like bone chips, organic bone chips in there kind of just like as a starting fertilizer and that's pretty much all I do. After that I'll leave it alone and it has to do its thing. This is all I'm going to do. So I already started teasing them apart a little bit and in general it's not really pot bound so don't need to do too much here. 
just a tiny bit. I don't want to put any extra stress to this grass around this time of the year. Put it in, just backfill with a little bit of the soil, all the way around, and firm it in well. You want to make sure that there are absolutely no air pockets forming because when you have air pockets, water might collect in there. And when we have frost nights, which are not in the forecast, even not even yet, so I don't know when we're going to have our first frost night, but when it happens and you have an air pocket in there, the water is going to freeze or frost is going to sit in that air pocket and it could really damage or worst case even kill your perennial. So this is absolutely not what you want to happen, of course. So what I want to do now in a second is just grab my phone and walk you through the areas and just show you what I planted. But this is kind of the look that I'm hoping to get in a couple of years of time when they really go like big and bushy, that this grass is going to spill over this here. And yes, I still want to mantle all the ugliness that is going on here. Not sure when it's going to happen. But I think when there's kind of like a wood framing around it and then like this grass gently spilling over it, it will be so beautiful. And I hope it's going to work out pretty well. So now I'm just going to walk you through the area and what I've done today. So let me walk you through what I've done. I start up here in the top layer because down at the bottom layer, I just planted one grass. I just come in with my finger to show you where it is actually. Where is my finger actually now? Here. There is a grass. This is where the miscanthus went. So I have one miscanthus actually here at the corner, which turns into like this yellow autumn color. And then there I'm going to have the other one with a beautiful crimson red autumn coloring next to you. Hopefully bigger, better, beautiful. It has a good amount of sun during the day so I think it's going to be the perfect location for that one. So if we just keep continue walking at the top layer I can show you where I put all of the other plants. So the violas because there were just three of them I just put them here basically at the corner next to my little wicker fence that I built last fall and the color is really beautiful. I mean super nice and dark and I hope that they will grow in well and provide some beautiful autumn coloring. And then the mums. I put a tiny drift here basically. I mean, I just had five plants, so that is what it is. But next to the sweet potato vine, that is really looking beautiful still because we haven't had any frost yet and there's no frost in the forecast. So I'm not going to take them out as long as they look fabulous. And I think the combination of the dark foliage with the of the sweet potato vine with the mums looks really pretty together perfect look and then next to it i got a rose like a rose rugosa i think it's called therese bonnier if i'm not wrong it has pink flowers and the stems are also in this really beautiful dark red so i was really focusing on all kind of shades of dark red red crimson tones back here in the slope so let's continue walking and I can just show you where I put the Hackney Clover grasses that I was just planting with you. So here they are, a drift of three. There's still the lovely landscape fabric. I'm gonna mantle it at one point, but you can see they look really beautiful together. And when they grow bigger, I think it's just beautiful. And just look at the autumn foliage. Now I can show you a good close up. This is all the coloring that's going on in one plant. And that is so pretty. You still have these tints of green, yellow, amber, rust, crimson, everything. And they're beautiful autumn coloring. So this is definitely value for me. And now the last three, two actually, two anemones. I just planted them next to the shrubs. So here it is, the cotinus that we just planted and the corinus are over there still having some leaves. Even though we had wind, they're still clinging on. So I put the anemones here. So there's one here and one up there. It's a uh, shade at the moment, but in an hour from now, they should get some sun. So I feel this should be a perfect location for them. And I can't wait to see how they look next year. You guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you had fun with me in my garden today. I decided to say bye to you in front of my dahlias and now they're still looking really nice. No frost damage, nothing, because we haven't had any frost yet. And they're still flowering, as you can see. Creme de cassis looking great. And here is the creme brulee. No, it's a creme brulee, cafe au lait. That's what it is, creme brulee was a phlox. Uh, cafe au lait, the flowers are a little smaller though, and I'm not gonna cut them anymore. I'm just gonna let them do their thing now, enjoy them in the garden and be happy as long as it lasts for. So hope to see you very soon in my garden again. Until then, take care. Bye.